Hello, my name is Michael Malaya, and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Chunk. Today, I would like to talk to you about grip force and finger design. When selecting a gripper for an application, part stability is our primary concern. We must select a gripper with sufficient grip force and robustness for the application. We must also consider the effectiveness of the finger design. Here, we will show a variety of finger types and also how to approach grip force. There are three general categories of finger design types. The image on the left shows a pure friction grip. Here, the part is maintained only by the clamping force of the gripping fingers on the part. In the center image, we see fingers with a V-groove design. This provides some part capture and also helps to center the part when gripped. The image on the right shows a capture grip where the fingers positively engage the part. Here, friction is not required to maintain the part. Here are some real world examples of effective finger design. On the left, we see a parallel gripper performing an OD or outer dimension friction grip on a flat part. The center image shows a centric gripper performing an OD friction grip on a round part. The image on the right shows a parallel gripper performing an ID or inner dimension friction grip on a round part. All of these fingers depend on friction to maintain the part as they do not have any capture features. On the left, we see a parallel gripper with V-groove fingers performing an OD grip on a round part. The V-grooves help to maintain and center the part. The center image shows a parallel gripper performing an OD capture grip. The rear finger contacts the part in two places, while the forward finger makes contact in one place. These fingers engage the part geometry such that friction is not required to maintain the part. The right image shows a parallel gripper performing an OD capture grip on a round part. Each finger contacts the part in two places and utilizes finger inserts which engage with the geometry of the part such that friction is not required to hold the part. Now, we will see how required grip force is calculated. We need to know the maximum part mass, any acceleration or deceleration forces acting on the part, and the coefficient of friction between the part and the gripper fingers. In short, if the part mass increases, more grip force is required. If the robot or gantry acceleration increases, more grip force is required. More grip force is required when coefficient of friction is low, such as for Delrin on aluminum. Less grip force is required when coefficient of friction is high, such as for HKI elastomer material on aluminum. Now, I will demonstrate how coefficient of friction influences the maximum mass a gripper can maintain. Here is a PGN Plus P 80-1 parallel pneumatic gripper. This gripper is shown mounted to our static grip force demonstration assembly. This assembly allows us to test how the coefficient of friction of various finger insert materials affects how much mass a gripper can support. In this demonstration, the gripper, the actuation pressure, and the finger length will be held constant. I will test three finger insert materials shown here, aluminum, Delrin, and HKI. With each finger insert material loaded, I will then actuate the gripper and test how much mass the gripper can hold against gravity. Let's begin. First, we'll test the aluminum inserts. Here's the part and the gripper actuated on the part. Now we'll start loading mass onto the part to see how much mass it can hold. Starting with 1 kg, 2 kg. 3 kg, 4 kg, 5 kg, 6 kg, and as you can see the part has started to slide and we're considering this a failure. So this aluminum finger insert has held 6 kg. Next up are Delrin finger inserts. Actuate the gripper and start loading mass. 1 kg, 2 kg, 3 kg, 4 kg, 5 kg, 
So as you can see, the gripper has failed at 5 kg with Delrin inserts. Last, we have HKI material finger inserts. This is a shunk product made from elastomer material. Actuate the gripper and start loading mass. 1 kg. Let's just move up to 6 kg. 7 kg. 8 kg. 9 kg. 10 kg. 11 kg. 12 kg. 13 kg. 14 kg. 15 kg. Now it's kind of hard to see, but the part is slowly sliding down, which we will consider a failure. Now that you've seen different approaches to designing fingers, the takeaway is that your fingers should be designed to maximize the reliability of your application, be they designed for friction gripping or for capture. Thank you for watching this short video, and remember you can always look to Shunk for help with your applications.